Hello again. Today I'm going to talk about the series of books featuring George Smiley, which were written by John le Carre, which is the nom de plume of David Cornwell, who died um, quite recently. He was uh, a chap who had a very, very interesting upbringing. His father was something of a rogue, and there's a whole story in that. He, he's written his autobiography about that. And he went to um, college in Bern, Switzerland, studying German. And he was recruited as a source there by SIS. Then um, he, he was called up for national service, where he served in um, army intelligence. Then uh, after that, he uh, worked as an officer for MI5 before then joining uh, SIS or MI6 as an officer where he um, was sent to Germany. And while there, he was writing books, um, the most prominent of which was The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. And this kind of blew his cover. It became such a popular book. Uh, one of the great um, spy novels, a uh, terrific film as well. And um, George Smiley is a character in it, and he's a character in a few other of the early books, um, including um, the, uh, the murder of quality and things like this. Um, but it was really Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy that made him... Um, a national fictional uh, character. I picked the book up at, at an airport um, ahead of a long flight. I'd, I'd read um, the earlier spy books. Um, spy came in from the cold and um, some of the others that he'd written. And uh, The Looking Glass War was one as well, which was pretty good. That made a film, the film was not so good. Um, so I was reading this on the flight and what I realised that they, gradually as you get into the book is that he has created this um, world, uh, fictional world around uh, the British intelligence establishment. So for example, the headquarters of um, the service is called a circus and it's um, a rather odd building at Cambridge Circus. Whereas in reality, in um, um, John le Carre's time, it, the headquarters was a really odd building in St. James's, kind of um, zigzag stairs and all sorts of things and uh, pokey offices. And he kind of reproduced that in a fictional way. And also um, some of the um, outstations and support services. For example, he has uh, the lamplighters, which is the surveillance section run by Toby Esterhazy, which in himself is a fascinating character. So he, he creates all of this. And um, the plot of Tinker Tailor uh, is probably too difficult to explain um, in a short review, but basically it's a mole hunt. And I think it, it was the book that coined the term mole hunt. Um, there'd been a scandal and the head of the... Secret Service, uh, who was called Control, had had to resign. Uh, a British officer was captured, shot, wounded, uh, tortured uh, in Czechoslovakia. And what he was doing, he was sent on a, a mission by Control because Control suspected there was a mole. And um, what happened was it was a setup and it caused uh, Control to be sacked and because smiley was control's right hand man he had to go anyway at the start of tinker taylor smiley is brought in by the um the link between the cabinet officer and the intelligence services um because uh there's um a thread re-emerged which looks like there is a mole and from then on it's going back over uh, old territory back into the um, the annals of the circus to find out. And it, it controlled and narrowed the suspects down to uh, five Tinker Tailor soldier and um, uh, 
uh, rich one. Uh, he didn't use the tail, uh, sailor because it rhymed with tailor. That was it. Anyway, so um, that's the story. And um, one of the things that Le Carre does really, really well is, is characters. Uh, besides Smiley, who, who you get to know really well, and this guy who on the surface looks like a rather elderly civil servant who who's bookish and uh, something of a, a an Oxford uh, University type figure. He he actually went undercover in Nazi Germany and was running networks. So you know he's quite a formidable um, operator of in the intelligence world. And then people like Toby Esterhazy I've mentioned Peter Gwillem who. Um, kind of becomes the um, right-hand man of Smiley, does all his legwork in this, uh, and loads and loads of other characters, um, many of whom are, are continue into the next book. And the next book was The Honourable Schoolboy, and it's even more convoluted than Tinker Tailor. Um, when, you, um, when the rights for a movie are, are up, they do a praise of the plot and they couldn't praise the plot of Honourable Schoolboy. And one of the minor characters from Tinker Taylor, Jerry Westerby, um, is, is uh, the, the main character in Honourable Schoolboy. Um, it's, it's looking for um, a, a Moscow paid source uh, in Hong Kong. And the action goes Hong Kong, other Southeast Asian countries, obviously London. Uh, Smiley's in there. Smiley's running the service now. And um, the uh, it, it, it's very complicated. Uh, it's quite a bit of um, action in it um, because uh, there's a war, a Vietnam War still kind of going on. And um, uh, it... it really takes the story forward then after that is um, smiley's people which uh concerns the head of uh, smiley's counterpart in moscow at the moscow center is carla and um, carla is tr has a daughter who is is a very wayward uh, woman and he's trying to get her out into the West under a different identity. And he's looking among the emigre community for a suitable legend or, or false identity. And um, the, some of the emigres uh, get onto this and they contact London. Smiley is retired. Um, the emigre um, kind of leading figure in, in London is the general. And on his way to a meeting, he is shot um, um, by Soviet intelligence and it, I don't think it'll shock anybody to have the idea of of uh, the Russians uh, assassinating people in um, the UK as being far-fetched and he's killed with um, what Smiley describes to someone like as a, a Moscow centre uh, assassination weapon um, an inhumane killer designed, designed to obliterate so um that's another um, complex story, and um, the action goes to Switzerland, for example, and um, there's a real resolution that kind of wraps up the whole um, Smiley versus Carla um, story. Then uh, Secret Pilgrim, uh, which is kind of the career of Ned, who's a senior officer who used to run the Russia house in the, uh, for the circus, and it's his career from a trainee right through to retirement. And uh, Smiley is is there uh, in all stages and doing different things uh, at different times, running different parts of the uh, establishment. Uh, really, that, that's really one of the better books. And then it kind of comes up to date with uh, Legacy of Spies. And to my mind, it's kind of... Um, the weakest of them all. The chronology is a bit suspect. Um, it doesn't completely fit with the tale. Basically, it goes back to Spy Who Came In From The Cold. And um, as the result of that, uh, and if you've read that, um, the, the main character, Lemus, is killed 
uh, in Berlin. Uh, and apparently there is somebody who's claiming to be his son is trying to sue British intelligence. And um, so they grab hold of Peter Gwillem, who's now retired, and uh, start grilling him as to what happened. And he's, in, and he's very old in the book. And uh, he, instead of feigning loss of memory and, and say, oh, it's all in the past and all that, he, he can remember phone numbers and bank account numbers and all sorts of things uh, very accurately. Um, and it seems that the original safe house that uh, was used in the spy who came in from the cold is still operating in London, still run by Millie McRae. Now, this clashes with the plot of Tinker Taylor because Millie McRae was um, looking after a safe house, a different one, for um, the, um, the group around the mole in Tinker Taylor. So that doesn't, she wouldn't have still been running the other safe house. Anyway, just little, little things. Um, books are, re <coughs> excuse me, really well written. John le Carre, um, I say, does characters really well. Um, characters' relationships with women are always a little bit strange. Um, and he's very anti-American as a writer, which I, 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 I find um, to be a problem. Uh, for example, uh, and another thing, um, when the Iranian embassy siege was broken by the SAS, he wrote at the time, he deplored it. He didn't like the idea of special forces or, or anyone going in and killing terrorists. Um, it kind of offended his liberal sensibilities. And um, I mean, he's very eloquent about it, but I just think he's wrong. Uh, and he, he's a, a tremendous remainer. He hated Brexit. And, um, you know, he's not afraid to talk about it in his books. Uh, Tinker Taylor was made into a TV series. It's a, quite a long book. So they made it about seven hours, TV series, brilliantly done. Alec Guinness as uh, Smiley, uh, Bernard Hepton as uh, Toby Esterhaus. It was particularly good. Um, then they also um, filmed Smiley's People with much the same cast, except P the Peter Gwillem character is a different actor. Um, and there's one scene in it um, where Smiley interrogates uh, Carla's Russian um, kind of uh, helper in Bern, um, brings him in uh, uh, under a pretext of them being the Swiss banking authorities and, and they interrogate him with no force at all. It's just a, uh, sitting across a table and it's brilliant, brilliantly done in the, in the TV series Alec Guinness and and, um, and the, the, the actor who played the um, the Russian absolutely terrific um, and uh, really really good TV very gripping I've watched it a couple of times then they made a movie Tinker Taylor starring Gary Oldman as um, as George Marley it was actually, uh, obviously, a, a movie about one and a half hours as opposed to seven-hour TV. You, you're going to lose some stuff. But they actually put stuff in, like him swimming in, a, in a, a pond, which is not in the book at all and is unnecessary. So they stuck unnecessary scenes in, padding it, really, um, which didn't move the plot forward and had, obviously had to leave a lot out. And even though the actors were good, they were well-known actors. They weren't as good as the counterparts in the TV series, in my opinion. Now, Mark Strong is um, a terrific actor, and I think he was one of the best in it. And he played um, Jim Prido, who, whose part had been taken by Ian Bannon. And I, th I think Ian Bannon really got it right, as written. But uh, some of the other guys in it, in it, they just didn't quite come up to the standard. Maybe it's because it was a movie. Maybe it's because it was the way it was directed. But I, I think that was unfortunate, shall we say. Um, they're really good books. Uh, they stand the test of time over the arc of the stories. 
uh, with the reservations about his anti-Americanism, etc. Um, to one side, they're still some of my favourite uh, books in the genre of espionage fiction.